to everybody. Um, this partnership uh, with Kiroyan Partners is now in its fifth month. Uh, we started this partnership back in July. Um, this is an advocacy partnership and it is through this vehicle that Britcham is addressing issues relating to our members. So unlike all the other webinars that Britcham has been doing, in fact, since uh, March 2020, um, and, and I believe the number is nearly 100, um, these are exclusively for members and their nominees. Um, so we, we welcome our, our members. Uh, with regards to COP26, Britcham had taken a per particularly prominent role with regards uh, a first time partial virtual, pass partial physical um, presence at COP26 COP in the form of a partnership with the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce um, and uh, that we refer to as the Climate Chamber Mission. We brought together 10 companies domiciled in Indonesia, each of whom shared ambition to be able to uh, further their own uh, corporate progress in relation to climate change matters. Um, that particular initiative got a, a great deal of leadership and support from uh, another person that you'll be hearing from today, which is Ainsley Mann. Um, and Ainsley uh, pr provided our team at the executive office with tremendous direction. And that certainly uh, enabled us to have a very successful climate chamber mission. Um, with that, as Fira mentioned, uh, your moderator today is Pat Nocker Karoyan. Um, and uh, I'm going to hand over the floor to Pat Nocker, who I'm sure will do uh, a proper introduction to our very, very, uh, uh, very, very welcome guests. Uh, to share their expertise from the Indonesian perspective. Post COP26, what we know and the impact on Indonesia. Pat Nocker. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon to participants in Indonesia and neighboring countries. And good morning to those joining us from the UK or Europe in general. In the one and a half hours available to us, we are definitely not going to discuss the entire range of takeaways from COP26, but focus on how the Glasgow Climate Pact will affect Indonesia and how Indonesia intends to follow up on the pact. Richer members in particular are interested in gaining some insight into how this will affect their business and what, what opportunities may lay in store for them. We have three preeminent speakers today to talk about this interesting topic. Two are senior Indonesian government officials who will provide us with an overview of how our government regards the results of COP26 in Glasgow and what will and needs to be done to fulfill our commitments. A senior businessman who chairs the Bridgem Climate Change Member Focus Group will represent the views of the business companies and organizations that are members and supporters of Bridgem. And before we begin the discussions, please allow me to briefly introduce the three speakers. I will start with Dr. Indra Dharmawan, who is no stranger to the international business community in Jakarta, being a senior official at the Investment Coordination Board or BKPM, as we call it in Indonesia, for 13 years to date. And he was director of international cooperation after which two more directorships followed. The first being in charge of standardization of investment licensing and then of regional promotion. In the second term of President Jokowi, the former chairman of the Indonesian Young Entrepreneurs Association, or HIPMI as we call it here, Papa Bahlil Lahadalia, serves as Minister for Investment and Chairman of the Investment Coordination Board. Pa Indra Darmawan is currently Senior Economic Advisor to the Minister. And prior to his service at BKPM, Pa Indra spent 13 years as well in various positions at the Ministry of Development Planning, or BAPANAS, 
after commencing his professional career as an investment banker. Pa Indra graduated with a bachelor's degree in economics from Parahyangan University in Bandung. And thereafter, he earned a master's degree in community and regional planning from the London School of Economics and Political Science and PhD on the same subject at Flinders University in Australia. Bapak Krishnawan Anditya was installed as director for various energy, renewable energy, by the Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources in February of 2020, just before the lockdown, I must hasten to add. And he previously served in the ministry as head for planning and reporting and head of research and technology development for electrical energy, renewable energy, and energy conservation. He has been a visiting researcher at the Asia Pacific Energy Research Center in Tokyo, Japan, since 2012, where he has conducted research on geothermal electricity and renewable energy. So he knows a lot about these areas. Among the work he has done at the center is represent Indonesia in conducting a peer review on low carbon energy policies for the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC. And that was way back in 2013. Representing the business people attending the uh, event today is Mr. Ainsley Mann, who was chairman of RICHM Indonesia and is currently the chamber's chairman of the Climate Change Focus Group. He is ASEAN head of business development based in Indonesia for Swire Properties, which is part of Swire Pacific that he has belonged to since. 1998, so more than 20 years ago. And Ainsley graduated from the University of Aberdeen in Scotland with a degree in land economics and valuation. He is a native of Glasgow. I believe people who are natives of Glasgow are called Glaswegians. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So in addition to a professional interest in COP26, he has a personal stake and what has happened in his hometown. As well, Pa Inchley is the Scottish government's trade envoy to Indonesia. Now I will share a little bit about how we will proceed. Pa Indra will offer his views on the impact of COP26 on Indonesia for about 10 minutes, followed by Pa Krishnawan for the same length of time, specifically from the point of view or the ministry he represents, which is the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources. Pa Ainsley will then provide his comments from the perspective of a British business executive who is deeply involved in various aspects of the Indonesian economy. After all three speakers have expressed their views, we will have an open and I hope lively discussion and uh, of course, the audience will have the opportunity to ask questions afterwards. Thank you so much for op the opportunity to uh, uh, become a speaker in this uh, very uh, festive event. So let me share the presentation material of me. Uh, so do you see my uh, presentation ready? Yes. Okay. So. Allow me to, on behalf of the Director General of uh, New and Renewable Energy, Energy Conservation, Dr. Dadan, because uh, I, I do apologize on behalf of him because he's supposed to be delivered this uh, uh, presentation. However, there is a, some meeting with the minister. So uh, I would like to, on behalf of him, to represent him, uh, to present related to the Indonesian New Renewable Energy Development and Energy Transition toward net zero emissions. So. I would like to start with the current energy condition actually in Indonesia. So you may know that uh, actually our renewable energy share in the primary energy will be at 23% by 2025. However, uh, last year in 2020, the achievement is uh, was uh, only 112 
we are still dominated by fossil uh, uh, fuel uh, in terms of the energy. However, in the other sides, uh, we also have a very abundant uh, potential of new renewable energy. So if you look at Indonesia, it's actually a blessing country. We are already having all the kind of type of the renewable energy, starting from the solar, hydro, bioenergy, wind, geothermal, and also ocean. And we, this is the numbers of the potential is just updated uh, by the uh, ministries. So the potential now is around uh, 3,600 gigawatts. So it's very huge. Mm -hmm. While the other side, the utilization is very small, just less than uh, two, not, uh, 1 percent if you look at uh, uh, the, the, this, uh, the data. Related to the net zero emission, actually our president already having bold commitment in terms of toward net zero emission and uh, reducing the emission. There are many occasions already uh, uh, showing the commitment related to transforming toward net zero uh, and green technology-based economy, and also trying to encourage green development, green industrial park, and also trying to uh, increase the investment to the development of biofuel, electric vehicle ecosystem, including lithium battery industry. And also the carbon market, carbon price must be part of effort to address the issue of climate change. If you look at actually uh, our uh, target related to the reduction of emission in the energy sector, actually we are uh, 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 achieved our target. You can see uh, in 2020, our realization in reducing emission is 64.4, while in the target is, uh, was uh, 58 uh, million tons CO2. And we expected in 2021, uh, the reducing emission will be exceeded again the target. So in terms of the, uh, uh, you can see in here, emission from energy sector, in 2020, actually we already successfully to reducing the emission, 580 million tons here. Uh, emission in 2030, we expect it will reach uh, 695 million tons. Uh, and after that, uh, we expect it will be uh, reduced uh, in 642 million and will occur after what? The peak emission in the energy sector will be 2039, which is the number 607 million tons. Uh, in the energy uh, sector, um, particularly in the power plant, actually the emission will be zero or will be null in 2060. However, we still remaining uh, emission in, in demand side, which is uh, uh, around 401 million tons CO2 emission. So, Related to the uh, medium plan, in midterm plan, uh, we already uh, stipulated the RPTLs, the PLN Electricity Supply Business Plan. This is actually the one, uh, the greener RPTL uh, that already uh, stipulated by the minister. Under this RPTL, around 29 gigawatt of additional uh, power uh, generation will be added until 2030. So comparing with the numbers of total of power plant will be developed 40.9 gigawatt. This is actually uh, uh, the, the, the share of uh, uh, renewable energy power generation already uh, big enough, 51.6%. Uh, there are some program that we encourage the development considering uh, the our uh, 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 meeting the target 23% by 2025 is remaining uh, less than five years. So one uh, of the type of renewable energy to be prioritized is uh, to develop uh, solar power. Why? It is because we have uh, abundant uh, solar power. And the second one, the installation is very fast. And the third one is the cost of the technology is already uh, uh, declines very uh, drastically. So we are trying to uh, boosting the solar rooftop development, which is the target is uh, 3.6 uh, gigawatt until 2025. While uh, in the last scale solar power plant is also uh, encouraged with the target 4.68 gigawatt. The type of the solar power uh, will be developed is most likely we encourage the floating solar PV. It is because the potential is very huge and it can be coexist with the hydro and as a part to addressing the issue of the intermittency. This we have uh, some 
uh, good ex uh, experience uh, when we have uh, a construction, the first uh, biggest floating solar PV in Cirata, which is coexist with the uh, hydro uh, Cirata. And then uh, we also uh, trying to uh, conversion uh, diesel power plant to a renewable energy. This is actually the medium plan to replace all the diesel power plant uh, exist in the remote areas with the renewable energy. And uh, PR just uh, recently already stipulated uh, some uh, uh, project to the developer uh, during the Indonesia uh, EBTKE Connex. Uh, related to the long-term strategy towards a net zero emission, the ministry is already provide the roadmap. You can see here the timeline, the time period starting 2021 to 2025. We expected all the necessary regulation can be stipulated, including uh, a, a law of a new renewable energy. And by 2025, we expected the share of uh, renewable energy in power generation can be 23%. And in the period 2026-2030, we expected gradually uh, reducing uh, import of LPG, and we expected the new renewable energy will be 29.5%. Uh, and we expected also electric vehicles, 2 million for four wheelers and 30 million for two wheelers uh, already established uh, in the road. And it's starting from 2031-2035, we expected the first state uh, subcritical coal fire power plant can be uh, retired. And we expected uh, new renewable energy will come 57% uh, dominated by solar PV. So, and the period 2036-2040, the second stage of retirement of uh, coal fire power plant will be uh, proceed and the uh, new renewable energy share uh, can be uh, 66 uh, percent. Starting from 2041 to 2050, uh, we expected our large scale ocean, current, and then nuclear power plant can be operation in this period. And we expected the share of new renewable energy can be uh, 93 percent. And the last period, 2051, 2060, we expected 100% renewable energy, uh, which is dominated by solar, will uh, supplying the uh, electricity demand in Indonesia. And the last coal fire and coal fire, gas fire and coal fire will be ended in this uh, period. So this is actually uh, the projection of the electricity supply uh, until 2016. You can see here, uh, most likely we still uh, rely on uh, uh, solar uh, uh, PV, uh, the yellow one, the bar yellow one. However, we already know that the solar is a variable renewable energy. There is uh, some intermittency issue. So in this, to address this kind of the issue, we also trying to develop the storage, which is kind of the pump storage, but the energy storage and also the hydrogen. So you can see in here. And then nuclear is a one part to be developed in order to uh, replacing a uh, coal fire power plant in the long term. And then, of course, we already know that Indonesia is a blessing country. Actually, there are uh, many uh, potential resources in, in the remote area. However, the demand in that area is very less. So in order to expedite this potential to other uh, 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 areas, which is uh, need more uh, supply, then one uh, key uh, success factor to go to uh, 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 net zero emission try to uh, develop a super grid and smart grid technology including you can see in do, the red dot this is actually the smart grid pilot project uh, uh, established by the pln so we expected this can be uh, developed massively in the other area in order to increasing the penetration of new renewable energy and this is actually the investment you can see here uh, in order to go to net zero emission, we need a lot of a lot of uh, uh, investment uh, funding. As you can see, uh, uh, 25 billion US dollar per year in order to go to uh, net zero emission until 2060. So this is actually the typically uh, our planning to uh, making the retirement of the coal fire plant. This is actually natural uh, 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 retire of the coal fire power plant. 
So we already in process in our RPTL. There is no more uh, 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 coal fire power plant to be developed unless uh, there is a, already uh, having a contract already under the construction states. However, we also trying uh, getting the some support from international uh, related to making accelerate uh, early retirement of the coal in order to uh, increasing the penetration of renewable energy under the energy transition mechanism. So the concept is uh, uh, we will try to take over the existing coal fire power plant and trying to replace it uh, uh, with the new renewable energy. We operated uh, this coal fire power for uh, some period of time, but a very uh, 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 what you call uh, is not to be complete until the the, the age of the time, but uh, we operated for several years. However, we need uh, funding to support this kind of the transition from the multilateral banks, domestic and international private sector, and long-term investor with low fees and low interest. So the other uh, sub uh, 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 program that already established uh, related to the carbon tax, uh, this uh, regulation is just a new one. Uh, it, will, it will be um, uh, implemented uh, uh, next year, April 2022. This is actually the concept of the carbon uh, cap and tax. And for the long-term strategy of energy sector, uh, uh, we also already in the demand side, we also have already having a long-term strategy to stop import LPG in the residential uh, sector and trying to boosting uh, the utilization of electricity stove in industrial sector. We are trying to increase electricity uh, share and reducing coal and trying to also increasing the gas. In transportation sector, of course, we are trying to uh, uh, reducing the import of oil and by this utilization will be maintaining for 30% and we accelerated uh, the implementation of electric vehicles. So that's all of, of my presentation. Uh, uh, I will uh, give it back to the Pak Nuke. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pak Krishnawan. And now we will hear from Pak Indra. I hope the issue has been taken care of. The floor is yours, Pak Indra. Thank you, Pak. Can you hear me uh, right yes. now? Yes. Okay. Now we can hear you very loud and clear. Okay. I'm so sorry for this technical glitch. <laughs> that uh, happens. Or... <laughs> So sorry for that. Um, <clears throat> hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me on these wonderful occasions. Uh, uh, Krishnawan have been giving us our uh, uh, most comprehensive analysis and also some information about uh, the situation right now post-COVID. Uh, <clears throat> but if I can share you some uh, some thought just uh, just to add, and we can we can uh, add later in the discussion session that before the COP twenty six event, uh, I I felt fairly pessimistic about the process. To be honest, uh, it was quite obvious that there was a real breakdown of the trust, particularly between poor countries and rich countries that we see in the scene on, especially on how to share the burden of responsibility to cut emissions. Um, also because the event is held in a country where the government there have to turn their coal powered electricity again <laughs> uh, due to sort shortage of power and the living cri uh, energy crisis at that time. And the winter is coming. So uh, uh, they need a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> power to heat them up. So there are indeed some mixed feeling uh, that everyone can see about the outcome of uh, COP26 where 107, 197 parties agreeing to the Glasgow Climate Pact. Uh, well, it was neither a triumph or, nor a total failure. Uh, as far as I can read from the analysis uh, from the media, uh, as well as uh, some talks with, uh, within the government circles and also within the uh, community. There are some causes for celebrations and some frustrations too. Act, um, however, uh, we can see some several notable achievements from that uh, event. As countries committed themselves uh, to further accelerating their decarbonization plan, 
and specifically to uh, strengthening their emission reduction target for 2030 by next year, rather than 2025, uh, as per the five-year schedule set out under the uh, Paris Agreement. And, and developed countries were urged, not requested. There was, there was some discussion about uh, using urge or request uh, developed uh, countries to double funding for adaptation in developing countries by 2025. Rules to create a framework uh, for a global carbon market were approved. Um, that uh, settling a problem that had plucked uh, negotiators since uh, six, five years ago. Uh, and also the need to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions by a uh, whopping 45% by 2030 was uh, formally uh, recognized. So uh, not, at all, uh, not all of them is uh, a stuff of triumphs, but not also uh, uh, a total failure. So kind of big, uh, kind of a mix uh, uh, feelings that uh, come up from the outcome of the event. But we do, saw some multilateral agreements but to do better on, you see, on, 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 on methane, cars, forests, fossil fuel subsidies, some degree of agreements on finance, uh, and some detail about agreements uh, on rule book uh, of, of the Paris agreements, particularly on global carbon market being finally agreed. Um, all of that is positive change, uh, yet all of the pledges are a long, long way to reach the Paris agreement goals. Probably um, sufficient enough, given our best effort, but not enough. Um, and Glasgow is certainly need to go beyond pledge, promises, and commitments. Uh, it needs actions. Uh, even if all the government resources are directed toward uh, financing the emission reduction, it's still not enough. That's why we need to turn to private sectors to investment. This is where private investment is coming to the pictures. So we need to shift and have a transition to green energy, whatever that means. Um, this pose uh, a further challenge for the parties also, including Indonesia. So despite our target of ambitious national target of 29 and 41%, uh, we are still like behind our target, for example, on the uh, new and renewable energy uh, investment for this year, targeted as at, at around $2 billion. Uh, we, we only reach, uh, reach half of them. And our target to reach 23% of uh, new and, re uh, and renewable energy, 23% by 2025% right now, the current uh, uh, state was about around 10 percent or 10, 10 to 12 at the, uh, at the most. And talking about investment in, uh, in this new and renewable uh, energy, uh, Jokowi uh, in the last five days, just in the last five days, have been twice talking about this, about how to transition the economy to green economy and to change from the fossil fuel to uh, green energy. Uh, he said, if I'm not mistaken, uh, heard uh, about we said that the renewable energies is well known as the very expensive one and who will pay the gap of, of the price. The other item that we should also discuss is how to reduce the, the subsidy for uh, 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 the subsidy of uh, fossil fuel. And also uh, how to create the financing mechanism for the transitions to green energy. We see from the uh, from Pak Krishnawan. Um, uh, explanations about the detailed transition path trajectory uh, until maybe 
20, 30 years from now, 40 years from now. And that gives us some hope that, uh, that we can achieve the transition that is very complex. So the early retirement of coal-fired power plants is on the pipelines, and we have a plan and we have a trajectory to reach that. But the actual uh, concrete steps toward that, which are also being understood by the business players is not yet in place. We need also to provide incentive and disincentive more to the business players on this green economy to reduce their emissions in their economic activities. So far, we have only have the fiscal incentive and non-fiscal one. The fiscal incentive, the traditional uh, tax breaks includes the uh, tax holidays and tax allowance, uh, and also some uh, non-fiscal incentive, including the uh, rules and regulation that make it easier to do business in Indonesia, and also to smooth uh, the licensing process. The uh, job creation law, also known as the omnibus law, is also being in place right now for maybe a year already. And we still struggle to uh, fine tune it to make it reach their goals. That means that to create jobs. And in our ministry, uh, we already launched the new online single submission to make it easier for business player to process their license uh, just last August. And we still have our refinement and our um, uh, 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 effort to make it even uh, easier for the business player to process their license. So I guess that is some addition information for me, um, in, in addition to the what uh, Krishnawan have already been said, mm -hmm. and then we can discuss uh, it in the Q&A sessions. Back to you, Panoka. Thank you. Thank you, Pa Indra. Now we go to Pa Ainsley Mann. Thank you, Pa Inoka. Actually, I very much agree with just about everything Pat Indra said. Oh, um, <laughs> to, so to a very large the discussion now. Yeah, to, to a very large extent. Um, much of what I was going to say, he, he's just said. Uh, I was just in another meeting earlier, and, and someone was asking me, did I think COP was a success or a failure? And I agree with Indra, it was neither one thing nor the other in, in that respect. And really depends on the lens you were looking at it from. Um, did the, some of the commitments go far enough? Probably not. But my glass is always half full. At least there was progress made. And there was progress made in a, in a number of areas, which I think is quite important, ju just in terms of optics. Uh, Indra touched upon the, the need of the, the wealthier countries to assist uh, the poorer countries. And there was certainly, I think, a recognition of the impacts of climate change are global, but they're particularly uh, uneven in certain respects. And there are a number of countries that uh, are more likely to be uh, severely impacted in a, in a shorter space of time, particularly in Asia, where a large, a large percentage of the population lives in coastal areas. And these are some of the areas that are, that are most at risk from the, the impacts of climate change. So the fact that, that they're not talking about a fund and, uh, to help with adaptation, I think is a, is a good thing. Whether or not it goes far enough, uh, I'm not really qualified to say because I really don't know how much is, is going to be required to support adaptation. But I think the recognition of that was, was important. Uh, 
I think there's also a recognition now that there doesn't necessarily need to be a trade-off between uh, development and sustainability. Uh, sustainability has proven over the last few years that there are very attractive business models in terms of, of sustainability. Um, and the fear that sustainability um, and renewables is going to add significantly to costs, I don't think is that well grounded. In the short term, yes, but if you look at the trajectory of costs associated with renewables, mm -hmm. it's only gone one way and it's gone down and it's gone down at a fairly rapid rate. Uh, and part of that is, is to do, do with scale. And part of it, of course, if you're introducing new technologies, and initially they're going to be quite expensive, but once they become uh, commercially viable and scalable, the cost does go down. So I think it's a little bit short-sighted to say we can't do it because the cost is high, because you've got to start somewhere. Um, and over time, there's, there's no doubt that the costs will go down. I think the greatest example of that, well, obviously solar and offshore wind. If you look at offshore wind costs 10 years ago and compare them to, to the cost today, there's, there's a fraction. And the technology's changed and the technology will continue uh, to change. Um, I also think there is definitely uh, uh, one of the outcomes is that climate change is not a personal responsibility. It's definitely a collective responsibility. And uh, COP26 brought more business input into the discussion than previous COPs. And I think that was a good thing. Um, again, Indra mentioned the need of the private sector to get involved. And the fact that the private sector is far more involved in many respects in, in, in this COP than previous COPs, I think is, is very much a step in the right direction. The, the public and the private sector really need to work very closely together. And that was the initiative that the UN took to have the business of angels leading all the different sustainability goals, I think it was a good, a good thing. Um, the Indonesian delegation had quite a lot of uh, private sector um, people there, um, and the feedback I got from them was was very encouraging. Um, and certainly over the last uh, two or three years, the number of companies here that have, that have committed to net zero objectives has, has, has started to grow, and that's also a good thing. So the public and private sector collaboration, I think, is only going to, to increase, it should only increase. And the fact that uh, it was really quite central to a lot of the, the COP discussions, I think, was good. I do uh, question some of the, there were a lot of commitments made. The how wasn't necessarily uh, that clear um, for a lot of the commitments. But hopefully that will come out in the wash um, over time. Uh, in terms of Indonesia, well, the fact that Indonesia did have a business delegation there, um, the fact that I think Chris alluded to earlier that uh, our chamber was quite involved, it was, it was good profile for Indonesia in some respects and good profile for the companies that, uh, that attended there. And I know they made, they made uh, some valuable uh, connections and hopefully these connections can translate into business partnerships going forward. Um, and I'm aware of at least three or four companies intending to come back out here in Q1 next year to further discussions with, uh, with Indonesian partners. So from that perspective, I think it was, it was, it was quite valuable. Um, also, Indonesia's getting more of a, a profile internationally, which is good because it's, it's often not that well understood here. Um, and the more that Indonesia can raise its profile internationally and just... Um, promote the opportunities, I think is a very positive thing. When it comes to uh, Pat Christman's uh, presentation, I, I've got to say uh, the, the, the plan looks fantastic. Yeah, it's been, obviously so it's been well thought out. It's how to get there. I think um, there'll still be a lot of questions, but the fact that there is a plan in place is a, is a good thing in the first place. Uh, a couple of things that have come to my mind that um, solar PV looked like having a, sub, a, a substantial component of uh, the renewable energy mix in the future. Solar PV needs land. So I just wonder how much land is going to be required for all of that solar PV. Or um, is the legal framework going to be in place so that, uh, that solar, more floating solar in the ocean um, can be executed quickly? So just in terms of reaching some of the targets, uh, some practical 
uh, challenges just in terms of the land grab or, or maybe uh, the, the, the user rights on, on the ocean. Um, and then there was talk of the carbon tax. Uh, I've yet to hear, or maybe I'm wrong, um, will the carbon tax be ring-fenced? Uh, the receipts of the carbon tax be ring-fenced and dedicated solely to uh, supporting the energy transition? Because I think this that would be a very, very important statement to make. Um, and embedded in that uh, great plan uh, presented by Pat Krishnaman, I would like to see uh, over time, you know, the receipts of the carbon tax and how the, how the carbon tax receipts could necessarily be reinvested to accelerate uh, the energy transition. I think it would be uh, an important discussion to have and it'd be good for industry to understand if that would be the case and how they can then plan for that in the future. A couple of uh, comments on that. Just in terms of the, the resources, the natural resources in the plan. Um, there's not a lot of marine, and it, it, Indonesia has vast marine energy resources. Marine energy is typically quite expensive at the moment, but again, it's going the same trajectory as offshore wind. The costs are going down very, very rapidly. Uh, and I think Indonesia could really be a significant global player in that sector, just because of the resources here and the supporting industry that could be developed to, uh, to support that. So that's that's something to look at. Also, I didn't see, or maybe I missed it, I didn't see uh, much mention of carbon capture and storage. Now, clearly, that's going to be important to some extent going forward. And finally, I know there's been a lot of talk about waste to energy, but if I look at the tenders that are out for waste to energy, a lot of it's incineration. And incineration is by no means uh, carbon neutral. It's... Uh, so it, it, some of the technologies that need to be applied to the treatment of waste and waste to energy in terms of pre-treatment, et cetera, need to be more carefully considered if it's going to, to contribute to uh, the net zero ambitions. So that's really uh, so my quick overview, Noki. I'm, I'm generally quite encouraged, but the devil is always in the details. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Ainsley. I think you pose a question that should be an opening shot in this discussion about the carbon tax, whether it will be ring-fenced. And I think the two senior government officials will be able to respond to that. And I would like to add one thing. As a former CEO of a coal mining company, power plants are at the tail end. It is preceded by coal mining which uh, provides a lot of jobs. And yeah. usually a coal mine generates, um, say, uh, a double, uh, say the, the impact in, in economic, the economic uh, impact of a, of a mining operation is usually double the input. So that will, we are not speaking of the manpower yet. So these are issues that also need to be taken care of. Mind you, I agree that coal mines should be gradually phased out. We don't need to discuss whether it's phased out or phased down because both imply that there will be a reduction. And I think for a country like Indonesia, that depends a lot on its revenues, on its uh, foreign exchange income, also from coal mines. Uh, I'm sure that the government has already thought of solutions of how to replace them, because it's not easy to find jobs for all those people who will be jobless in the future, and also for all the services that also provide um, valuable income or valuable input to the mining companies. So I would kick off with these two questions. The first being the one posed by Ainsley, 
about the carbon tax and the second about what happens to the disappearance of this multiplier effect that was generated by coal mines. That is quite large in Indonesia. So maybe Pak Krishnawan, you would like to, you're an expert in all these areas. So maybe you can um, respond first before we go to Pak Indra. Thank you, Pak Nuke and Mr. Ashley for what you call straightforward question. Uh, I will try to uh, uh, what you call explain more information. I will try to add uh, some information before I would like to uh, directly to answer that uh, question. So actually, when we are trying to develop uh, renewable energy, actually we also consider that the renewable energy to be deployed should be competitiveness enough in order to in the customer side can be affordable. So that's why if you look at the, all the potential that we have, if the renewable energy cost still high, so we are not trying to develop at the moment, at the time. So if, if you look at in my presentation, ocean energy, Indonesia is very abundant with the ocean energy. Uh, the potential is uh, around uh, 60 gigawatt. However, there is none project or a, a, a power generation to be developed at the moment in commercially. It is because the cost is very high. The yeah, proposal comes to us at, uh, two years ago, around 45 cents per kilowatt hour, and then down 25. And then actually just recently, there is some discussion with the ministries, coordinating ministries of maritime investment. We trying to develop the pilot project, but the cost will be 11 cents, the maximum. That's the, the, the proposal that uh, we are now trying to uh, discuss more detail in order to making some pilot project in, 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 in uh, tidal energies. And related to the others, uh, technology, of course, uh, even though this, uh, 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 the, 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 the target of net zero emissions of Indonesia is uh, 2060, but it can be sooner if there is uh, some international uh, support. So, there are three things that we need uh, in order to accelerate Indonesia can toward net zero emission before 2060. What is the investment? We need a lot of investment of that. The second one is technology. If the technology exists, then we need that one. So we actually requested from the uh, developed country to support us, don't push us. So this is actually the one thing that uh, the government would like to, uh, 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 what you call, Indonesia is ready. The program is uh, already on the table, but how to execute it, this program? This, uh, this is need uh, 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 support from the international. And uh, related to the carbon tax, actually the mentioning of the carbon tax is uh, in order uh, uh, to try to avoiding increasing the emissions. So if you talk about the emission, trying to avoid increasing the emission, then this is actually can be used for the renewable energy. However, we are now trying to uh, still uh, discuss in more detail how the concept carbon tax can be also very useful for funding in a renewable energy project later on, because it's just a uh, uh, presidential regulation on uh, car economic carbon value just uh, recently uh, uh, stipulated and the minister uh, uh, related, the minister will try to uh, uh, ex uh, expand uh, the message in, in, in the presidential regulation into the uh, implementing. However, uh, actually in the electricity sector, most likely it is already implemented uh, last year as a lesson learned. So we are trying to already set up the cap uh, with a, a capacity of power plant, for example, coal fire power plant with the capacity 400 megawatt, this, the cap of the emission is uh, 0.9 uh, 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 ton per megawatt hour. And then 100 to 400 is a uh, 1.1 uh, 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 ton per megawatt hour. And for man mode uh, with the capacity 100, uh, 1.3 uh, 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 ton per megawatt hour. It will be changed, depend of the uh, technology we are not trying to working uh, to to look at the the best way of the setting the the, the cap and actually the tax uh, will be implemented uh, next year 
Uh, however, uh, it is not solely uh, pushed to be text. It can be. So the, 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 the emitter of call power, uh, which is exceed the cap, they may buying the emission from other uh, uh, power generation, including a uh, coal fire power plant, which is uh, having uh, 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 emission less than the cap, all from the renewable energy. The concept is still uh, defined to find uh, the best uh, solution. Uh, in order to mitigate the emission, uh, uh, green uh, emission, uh, 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 CO2 emission. And related to the what you call the job creation, this is actually the concept of the uh, Ministry of the Roadmap. Of course, the workforce is very important. How, how uh, 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 what you call uh, the workforce in the uh, upstream side, in the coal and in the coal fire power plant can be also uh, involved in the transition of the energy uh, in, in renewable energy. So uh, one of the policy that we are not trying to prepare is how to uh, using the coal mining to the others uh, user, not for power generation, but can be used for others purpose. For example, perhaps maybe you already read in some uh, paper, uh, newspapers, medias, uh, one of uh, 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 ideas of the government is trying to making the uh, uh, DMA, the metal ether, uh, for the coal in order to replace with the LPG. That's the one of the concept that we are considered. So it doesn't mean the coal industry should be killed. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. We try to find to add the purpose of the coal because we already know that there is a lot of workforce in the, uh, in the upstream side. While in the, in the, in the coal fire power plant, we are trying now to identification what kind of the job can be related to the uh, renewable energy power generation. We try to identification. If they need to scale up with the capacity, then we try to uh, 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 working with the, uh, our, uh, what you call, the uh, 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 club is a, a education and training center to increase that. We try to uh, identification very carefully. It's not just one shot, then everything changes. We need support from international. We need to also uh, making a good transition in order to uh, smoothly uh, going to uh, uh, net zero emission. That's my comment at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Krishnaman. Uh, Indra, would you like to add to? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Pak. Uh, on the carbon tax, I think uh, carbon tax and pricing to be precise, I think. Uh, the explanation from uh, Krishna one also shows that, that uh, the concept will elaborate into two uh, pro uh, concept. Uh, one is uh, cap for trade. Uh, the, the other is uh, cap for uh, tech itself. So, um, yeah. Um, I think talking about this uh, tax, if you, I think it's easy and popular for, say, for example, the politician to say about the benefit of long-term generation from this emission cut. But when you ask people to pay, that's, that's another thing. It will not be very popular. So, uh, but Jokowi said uh, again that uh, when he raised the electricity bill, uh, on his first period uh, of ad administrations, uh, there were some demonstration and protest for three months when French President uh, Macron uh, enacted uh, a tiny gasoline tax. Uh, he was met with years of uh, what you call that, yellow jacket demonstration around uh, Paris. Um, and we read in the media that uh, in, in June, uh, Swiss voters said no uh, to new carbon tax. And last, uh, last time, the UK government, I think, backed off uh, on even introducing a new costly mandate uh, to replace gas fire, um, home heating, something like that. So it's uh, uh, talking about the grandiose uh, uh, concept about the benefit of uh, <clears throat> uh, climate change, uh, of tackling climate change issue. Is one thing, but asking people to pay is another thing. Uh, the the uh, the cost is immediate. 
So the benefit is long terms and grandiose, uh, no doubt about it, but the cost is immediate and directly hit your pocket. So that would be a challenge for the Indonesian government uh, next year, when uh, April next year, to impose uh, these uh, new measures. I think it's really wise to start low. Uh, I guess uh, the, the measure will start with uh, 30 rupiah per kilogram, right? Uh, 30 rupiah per, per kilogram carbon. Uh, that is uh, down from uh, 70 rupiah, I think, 70 rupiah before. So uh, it's kind of a good and positive step, I think for the pricing of that carbon to, to lure people to, uh, to, to increase their willingness to pay. Uh, because we need to be realistic uh, to set uh, the threshold of uh, price. So we need to start low uh, actually uh, to, uh, to maintain this, uh, this uh, uh, to make this carbon tax and pricing also uh, applicable. On the pricing, yes, uh, uh, if one, uh, uh, one power plant can buy this like a certificate from others who are eligible for that. So there will be some carbon uh, trading. But uh, we, we also know that uh, this carbon market is yet to be developed. Uh, but the most important thing is also fix the, the price itself. So I think if the price of uh, green energy or this right below the fossil fuel, everyone will switch. So the uh, price is very, very important. So on this, uh, on the second issue that Panoko also raises about the, the coal, um, yeah, the, the current crisis uh, of energy, especially in Europe, for example, uh, shows us that it is very important that energy to be abundant, to be plenty, because otherwise we will pay the high bill, high cost of the electricity bill. And uh, many people also Many countries also express their pledge to reduce their coal consumptions. Uh, China, for example, Premier Li, uh, Li, Li Keqiang uh, said that there will be some gradual uh, pacing out uh, from the coal. I think I heard it as the hard code, like code de to keep using coal. So the, the transition from coal toward green energy is very much depend on the alternative. Yes, we do have the trajectory, the, the, trajectory, the plan. We want to uh, early retire uh, the PLTU, uh, the, the coal-fired power plant. But as far as there's no alternative for that, people still need some loan. Uh, need some coal. And banks and financial institutions uh, will need to stop their, uh, their, their uh, lending uh, to the coal producers as far as there's an alternative for that. So uh, we need to also to uh, create to uh, create the alternative as, as far as possible as fast and as far as possible uh, for the coal uh, to reduce our emissions. I think uh, that's all that I can add, Panoke. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Well, Inslee, do you have any comments to add? Or if I can so give a perspective from the, uh, the place that COP was hosted on renewables. I come from a country that 
traditionally in the rural areas and the islands suffered tremendously from what we call fuel poverty. So people were spending a large percentage of their disposable income importing diesel or bringing diesel in for generators to heat their homes. The cost of bringing diesel into the islands was expensive. Uh, it also wasn't very good for economic development. So when we started, when the country started looking at renewables, they didn't just look at the cost, the feed-in tariff, they looked at the overall economic benefit. Uh, and I think that is quite an important consideration um, when you're looking at uh, renewables. So whether you're mentioning the feed-in tariff of, of 11 cents or whatever, what about if that was a diff if 15 cents was the difference between a huge aquaculture uh, development in eastern Indonesia and not. Um, so the, the, there are some, the, the, in, the, the incentive to accelerate renewable energy in certain countries, I'm, I, and this is talking from the benefit of the experience of my country, Scotland, was not just on the cost of the power generation. It was on the wider economic and social benefits of, of, of developing that sector. Um, and it obviously creates jobs and it, and it helps create uh, new industries as well in areas where maybe development was more difficult. So it's just, it's something to, to consider when you're looking at, at this type of, of thing. Um, I, I, I totally agree on the call. I mean, the point that Noki was making about the amount, amount of people employed in it, you can't just shut down an industry and expect people to find jobs overnight. There really has to be a, to be a plan for that. And again, I, I come from a part of the world where in the 80s, uh, the coal mines were shut. Communities were decimated, literally decimated uh, overnight. And it, it's taken a long, long time to recover. So I, I, I very much sympathize with the social uh, uh, impacts of you know, uh, making a complete 180 degree turn on, on a certain industry sector because I grew up in, my generation grew up in an environment where um, the, the impacts were absolutely horrendous to certain communities that were dependent on, on the coal industry. The industry was shut down without, without a thought of what was going to replace it. And I think that is an important lesson that uh, Indonesia should certainly be, can learn from the likes of the UK, because the UK made some devastating mistakes. And the, the social impacts are still being felt in some communities to this day. So I very much sympathize with that. Thank you, Inslee. I think we now should give the opportunity to the audience. I see uh, quite a number of questions already. I will start with the topmost, which is a question from Tim Patterson to pa Krishnavan Anditya. The fossil fuel phase Phase out seems very much back end loaded. Apart from increasing up to B50 biofuels, what decarbonization technologies are currently being considered by the ministry, please? I think I will leave out the rest of the comments, but this is the, the core of the question. What other decarbonization technologies are being considered by your ministry, Krishnavan? Yes, thank you for the question. So actually, we are very carefully when we are trying to preparing the roadmap to toward net zero emissions. So any kind of technology to be uh, put it in place to be carefully to look at not only the existing technology, but also the cost of the technology itself. So we need to be balanced whether this can be expedited or uh, we are trying to postpone until the cost of technology uh, will be uh, uh, competitive enough. So related to the what you call the coal uh, passing out, passing down, actually the, 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 the plan of the government is just to shut down of the coal with the naturally the retirement. So if the contract is ready ended, then there is no possible again to extend the contracts. Yeah, that's the, the concept. And the coal uh, fire plant, which is already uh, uh, having a PPA or contract or under the construction, we are very committed to keep this uh, uh, the, the project. That's the, the, the message. 
So we are not uh, uh, what you call very, 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 uh, 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 what you call is not very carefully to, to, to making a passing out or passing uh, down the call. So that's the naturally. So we are respected the contract, but once the contract is ended, most likely the call five point contract is uh, 30 years, then there is no more extension. That's the concept. Then how the, the kind of the technology, how the coal fire propane can contribution to, 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 to reducing the uh, uh, emission. So actually in the medium term, we are trying to uh, push the PLN to making coal fire, biomass coal firing with the coal. So in, as a fuel of the coal, we, we, we try to coal firing of the coal fire power plant. So this is also reducing the, uh, the emission in the, in, the, in, in the medium term. And then the other one, of course, we know the, there is a, some a technology like uh, some people like uh, actually mentioning CCS or CCUS. This is also already on other table. We are now trying to look at if there is a, some possibility. There are some projects uh, in, 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 in oil and gas in Green Dulu. Uh, they will trying to using the CCUS as well. So this is the kind of the technology to be to be also considered to be uh, 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 put it in the uh, uh, coal fire power plant or oil uh, uh, refinery oil uh, 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 projects. And there is another one. There is uh, some uh, another new technology. We are trying to co-fire it with the ammonia. So this is also the new one uh, technology proposed by the Japanese uh, government. Uh, to propose uh, assisting technology to look at the possibility the coal fire the existing coal fire power plant in Indonesia can be coal firing with the ammonia not biomass but we are now trying to run uh, coal firing with the biomass this is also one the uh, kind of the technology to be also uh, look at and related to the what you call uh, biofuel B30 and B40 Actually, at, until now, uh, we are uh, already uh, what you call uh, set up that the, B, uh, the, the blended uh, in the uh, uh, biofuel is uh, 30, even though at the moment we are trying to uh, look at the possibility to increase more, 10% more uh, blended uh, uh, in the fuel. However, all kind of the technology, uh, 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 we are uh, uh, very happy. To, uh, we are very carefully to look at Thank you. Thank you, Pak Krishnawan. There's another question now from Mr. Curtis J. Solar power for remote village locations with low power requirements would be a great start. Simple small panels can provide lighting at night for children to study and for recharging small phones to encourage hang on development i think and uh, i think this is a very common question and i think both pa indra and pa krishna one should have a view on that and i'm i'm aware that the government's already doing something on that. Probably you could share that with the audience. And before we continue, I see there's a lot of interest. There's still a lot of questions, but we definitely won't be able to answer them all. And I would like to ask the Bridgeham Secretariat to make a note of them. And I would like to have the permission of Pak Rishnawan and Pak Indra and Pak Inchley to answer them probably by email after the, after the current session, because there's quite a lot of interest and we definitely cannot answer them all. But first of all, about this question about small solar panels, who would like to answer first, Pahindra or Pakrishnawan? Pakrishnawan, Pakrishnawan. Okay, thank you. So actually, we already know that Indonesia is a Japanese country. We have a 17, more than 17,000 islands. So many people living in the remote areas and scattered. Scatter. So there are three uh, 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 approaches when we are trying to electrify the people. 
One is uh, expansion the grid. This is actually if there is a one village and then the village is a very near uh, with the installation of the electricity. So we just expanded the grid. That's the first uh, concept. The second one is we are trying to develop a, a micro grid off grid, which is the people living in one area. However, the installation of all the electricity infrastructure is far from these uh, villages, but they're living in one location. So we are trying to uh, hmm. develop uh, any kind of uh, a renewable power generation. If there is a hydro exists, then we develop a hydro or there is a, some uh, biomass or solar PV or wind, we are trying to develop with the uh, we call, uh, concept is a, 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 grid, a micro grid of grid. The problem is if the people living scattered and the electricity infrastructure is far, it's a very challenging, it's very difficult. This is actually why the, our SEO electrification uh, is just stagnant uh, in, in around 99.2%. Uh, it is because we are now trying to reach the people uh, with a kind of the type of this. They are living in scatter and far from uh, infrastructure. So there is a one uh, 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 project uh, we have proposed uh, what we call the individual standalone. We provide them with the solar PV with small scale and one house, one uh, solar PV. This is already implemented actually starting uh, five years ago. And the second one, we are now trying to increase the capacity of the energy of electricity to be provided to them through the what we call the uh, battery storage. Uh, we call the uh, Tabung district, uh, the, the electricity can or electricity tube with capacity 500 uh, watt hour. One house is one, uh, 500 getting one uh, 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 electricity tube, uh, but a tube uh, with the capacity 500. This is also what the, of the concept. This is actually intermediate. If we expect it uh, when the infrastructure already uh, well established, then it's easy to 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 connect the uh, what you call a uh, 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 grid into uh, the people uh, in order to electrify uh, to them. So that's my 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 answer. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Krishnan. Pak Indra, do you have anything to add to that? I think you are yeah. still... Uh, in, in addition to what Pak uh, Krishnan has already mentioned uh, about the <clears throat> solar panel in villages, uh, I, I would add uh, at a much bigger scale uh, in the foreign company, from uh, United Arab Emirates that uh, <clears throat> we managed to, to, uh, to invite them uh, to invest to Indonesia. And uh, uh, finally, they, uh, they came and succeed. And we are uh, in the process of right now commissioning the, uh, one of the first uh, floating solar panels. Uh, Situated in the river and in the in the lake uh, of uh, Chirata, so uh, both uh, uh, a mix of between uh, small scales in the village and also uh, a larger scale uh, can do uh, uh, the job actually. And our experience to lure these uh, big companies to come to Indonesia is also quite a challenge and quite an experience. Um, and finally, we, uh, we managed to convince them to come and to, uh, to have them to have a look at the economical side of their projects and also the benefit for the local community. So the other example, uh, not particularly in the solar panels, but uh, in the uh, forest fire, for example, and also the, on the peatland, uh, which is also fall into the category of land use, which is also the, one of the source of the uh, carbon emissions. <clears throat> uh, and in a small village of <clears throat> Rio, for example, uh, in the Kabupaten Siak, uh, a place where it's well known for forest fire, in the peatland area. Right now, 
uh, uh, these the small affiliates and the small fishermen right now um, cultivating uh, small fisheries in the peat plant. Uh, with that activity, the forest fires is greatly reduced and the local economy is flourish and the people awareness to keep the environment clean is increasing tremendously. So tackling environmental issues is a mixture of that. So we see that sustainable development is not only about bird and bees, but also a local vibrance economy that also make the uh, people prosperous. Thank you. Thank you, Pahindra. I think we have time for one short question. And there is one such question from Pa Rizaldi Yudista Nurzirwan from Forest Carbon. Again, a question to Pa Krishnawan. Is government considering subsidy or compensation model for public who implement smallholder renewable energy in their house to speed up Indonesia's target on renewable energy fulfillment? If you could answer that briefly, Pa Krishnawan. Sure, Pa Nuki. So yes, government already provides some subsidies. So if you uh, uh, just uh, read the what you call it, media, uh, the minister already uh, what you call stipulated the new regulation related the uh, rooftop solar PV, which is uh, the incentive to be given. Uh, 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 first is uh, 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 the export value from uh, 65 percent now become 100 percent. And the second one is uh, 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 the what you call the uh, 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 if you have a excess uh, of the electricity from your uh, solar PV, you can keep it in the PLN uh, site uh, within three months, and after that they will uh, reset to zero. But now uh, you can keep uh, your electricity to the PLN more longer, to six uh, months. So we, this is actually uh, the what you call uh, uh, the what you call the strategy of the government in order to encourage people to participate in uh, development of uh, renewable energy, which is a more a very simple one. Is uh, just installing uh, uh, rooftop solar PV. Thank you. Thank you. I'm afraid we have run out of time, but before I write, I wrap up. I would like to give the opportunity to each speaker to give a closing statement. I will start with uh, Pa Insley. Do you have any closing statement to the audience? Uh, thank you, Noki. Uh, I thought the discussion was very illuminating. I understand the challenges here in Indonesia. I was just thinking as the discussion was progressing, a couple of things that were missed out in the discussion. We're, we're largely talking about the supply of energy. Not much talk about the demand and how to reduce the demand of energy. And I'm in the real estate business. So, uh, right. So, um, if you just look at at uh, the consumption of energy in the built environment, um, there's an awful lot. For example, could be done in terms of the regulations to make um, buildings, future buildings, a lot more energy efficient. There's probably an awful lot. That can be done if we really look at the at the demand for for energy and just reducing the demand, the consumption per capita or the consumption per square meter, uh, and I think that's something that probably needs to be taken more into consideration in terms of the overall strategy going forward. And the other comment I would have again, I was just thinking about this: Indonesia is a fast country. Uh, um, the PLN was up, was mentioned regularly. I just wonder if the, there's going to be some consideration to some deregulation of the PLN, particularly in some of the the the, um, the more remote areas or uh, say eastern Indonesia, where the perspective might be different to the perspective here in Java. And again, I can see the benefit of doing that in my own country, for example where people have taken a different view on the, on the cost-benefit analysis of, of renewables. So these are just two thoughts that I would like to, 
to le to leave you with. One is uh, no, let's not just focus on the supply side of the equation, but maybe think more about the demand side of the equation as well and what, what can be done there in the future. And secondly, does the PLN have the capacity to be able to, to manage all of this going forward in the future? And is there another way of doing this that might ex help accelerate the progression of adoption of some of these technologies? Thank you, very important points. Ainsley and Pindra? Yeah, but... Uh... Tackling the climate change problems, you can come to an expert and they will come uh, to you with uh, very sophisticated terms like uh, CCS, uh, elect electric vehicles, uh, trajectory, climate packs, uh, and, and so forth, net zero, and so forth. But you can also uh, ask the normal people, the, the people in the street, uh, for uh, for a voice. So what can normal people like us do uh, to help uh, combat the climate change? There are two things. First is vote for politicians who are pro climate change uh, improvement. So vote for that. Uh, the second one is use your role as a customer. Uh, ask for a product that is coming from a sustainable way of producing. That would be very powerful. I think that's the two uh, wisdom from the normal people that uh, also help uh, fight uh, climate change. But thank you so much. Thank you, Pointra. I think you're a very important point about using market pressure to achieve our goals. And yeah. now finally, uh, Krishnawan. Thank you, Pak. So I would like to uh, say that the, the minister already has stipulated the LPTLs of the PLN. There is a, a lot of uh, 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 room uh, related to the participations of private sector in developing uh, renewable energy in Indonesia. Just for your information, from 20.9 gigawatt of renewable energy power generation to be developed until 2030, around 11.9 gigawatt will be offered to the private sector. So this is the opportunity we are inviting you to making investment in renewable energy in Indonesia and as a part to making the a positive investment climate uh, we are now trying to finalize the presidential regulation related to the renewable energy tariff, which is uh, uh, will uh, providing the electricity tariff uh, more competitive enough, not only from, from, from the perspective of the uh, developer, but also from the PLN side. So please uh, 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 participate to, uh, uh, to making investment in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Krishnawan. And I thank you, the audience for this tremendous support and the uh, attention given. Unfortunately, we didn't have much time to answer each and every question. But as I mentioned before, the Secretariat of Britcham will take a note of the questions that were not answered yet. And we will endeavor to get back to you with the answers from the three speakers. And um, I would like to close by giving a few remarks. And I will start with the easiest. There seems to be the consensus, maybe in the whole world, that Glasgow is neither a resounding success nor a failure. It's somewhere in between. And that's normal because you can never please everybody. But the main thing is that it took place and it's better than having nothing and we are making progress albeit maybe not to the liking of many people but progress is being made public private partnerships in this particular area seems to be increasing in the future because of uh, cop 26 
And to Bridge Chair members, of course, there are tremendous business opportunities that arise out of COP26 in Indonesia. We're not talking about other countries, and there are plenty of opportunities for people or businesses in this particular sector. It's a growing sector, and we have officials who understand what they're talking about, and I'm sure they will be there to help you if you have further questions. Thank you to the speakers, to the audience, to the Bridgem board for making this happen. And I now return it to Mr. Chris Wren. Noka, uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, as you mentioned, we, we're over time and that's because the discussion was so vibrant, so relevant, so topical. Um, I, I'd just like to, on behalf of everybody at BritCham, um, thank uh, Pat Indra, Pat Krishna uh, and Ainsley for joining us. Uh, wonderfully directed and moderated Noka and um, BritCham members uh, do really appreciate the advocacy partnership that we're enjoying in association with uh, Karoyan. Um, so thank you to everybody. Uh, we, the, the Britcham Climate Change Member Focus Group will continue to post things, will continue to offer opportunities to air opinion uh, and uh, also to respond with solutions to some of the challenges that you've heard today. Um, I, I'd just like to mention to everybody, because we're really happy about this, that December the 10th, we're having our first uh, gathering as Britcham since March 2020. Um, mm. And amazingly, the demand has been absolutely, or maybe not amazingly, the demand has been fantastic. We have a handful of seats left. And if anybody in this audience wants to be included at the Mandarin Oriental for our awards and recognition night leading into the Britcham uh, Christmas evening, uh, December the 10th, then please get in touch ASAP. Um, with that, once again, thank you to the panel. Um, excellent thank contributions. Thank you to all attendees and keep your eyes open for future webinars and hopefully throughout next year, more of those traditional meetings that BritCham has become famous for over the years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chris. Uh, 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 uh,